bet you any money that Charles is this nigga's father, bro. Sacrifice. Don't you talk to me about sacrifice, Charles. I had to send my son back to the island, knowing full well that... my son too, Eloise. Let's cut his dick off. That's what I would have done. Shit, if you I was Norman... <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Mad Men. Yes, season three, episode six is here today hopefully you guys are enjoying the reactions man it has been a blast getting these episodes out for you guys it has been a blast man watching this series you know um just having the social commentary i know that we might not agree on every point but at the at the very least um when i do put my when i do put my thoughts <laughs> out there at the very least, I know that those um, thoughts are coming from a true place, right? And I, I don't put my thoughts out because I'm intentionally trying to offend people. I just speak the truth of what it is. A lot of the stuff that I talk about is based on facts and not feelings, right? So I just tell you guys how it is of what I'm experiencing. Maybe you're from another country and things are not like that there. I speak on the basis of what I see happening in the United States of America for the most part and in the worst in the West in general. So um don't get offended man. Let's listen. <laughs> Anyways, it's up to you guys. Whatever. We might agree to disagree. It is what it is. But in any case Let's jump into the reaction. If you guys want to see more episodes of Mad Men, if you want to watch ahead, there's always a Patreon you can go check out. Link is down in the description. I'm planning to add some new shows over there as well. So make sure you go check it out. Anyways, guys, let's jump into the reaction and I will see you guys right after for the review. Thirty. Why aren't you asleep? I'm afraid. Sally, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of what's going to happen when you turn off the lights. What? I'm home now. Go sleep. We have everyone's attention, please. This will only take a moment, and it will not be repeated. We've just been informed that there will be a visit from the director and chairman of the board of Putnam, Powell, and Lowe. We apologize. We realize we were to be closed Wednesday, July 3rd, but... Oh, come on. <laughs> they were unaware of the holiday. Don, may we have a word? Harry and Pete. Jones uh, we leaving? will need presentations for Wednesday morning on the state of television and, of course, uh, account updates. And Mr. Kinsey, you might want to shave your beard. What? Who the hell are you people? That was a joke. <laughs> I have a theory. I believe they're coming to see you. Why? They've shown a great deal of interest in you. They study and dissect your work, trying to decipher what is your particular American genius. I think it'll be a creative umbrella with a dual position in London and New York. Hope you can maintain this pretense when they arrive. Excuse me? <laughs> Kiss and make up before you cost us all something. You're being melodramatic. Please make an appointment at Angelo's for Mr. Sterling and Draper. Soonest available. Reconcile. <laughs> okay. It's done. John Deere is done. My boy is winning. Oh, sorry I'm late. Big accounts move slowly. But the John Deere doesn't. PPL's coming. When? Tomorrow morning. And we have to work Wednesday. We have to give presentations. 
You got that one just in time. John Deere is still here. around to this day, bro. That's crazy. I don't know how long they've been in business. I wonder if Sally's having. You can sleep all you want, little pig in a blanket. <laughs> I wonder if she's feeling left out. That was quite a shave. Go to town. He's next. I already have one. See, that's not true. My father was the tallest, handsomest, vainest man in New York, and he got his nails done. Woo! My company, why should I be nervous? Because you sold it. So that's it? That's what I did to you? Got you half a million dollars? <laughs> you sound like Burl Ives. You're part of the problem with Mona? Is that one day she just started judging people? I'll tell you right now, Don, I don't like being judged. Listen, Roger. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah, well. I was holding out for gratitude, but I'll take that. Thank you. Well, maybe now you'll have the money and the glory. Did you pick up a nightlight? I did. And I read her to sleep. She was still clingy. I don't remember her being that resentful of Bobby when he was born. She won't go near him. She won't even go in his room unless I make her. Yeah, that's what I am was thinking that she probably feel some sort of about a new baby. Would you ever want to live in London? I'm serious. Of course. I could get a pram and a real nanny. Don't count your chickens yet. We still really don't know what this is about. <laughs> there. Mr. Hooker, you neglected to tell me that our guests have arrived. <sighs> to what do I owe the pleasure? This is Mrs. Harris. She was the office manager before me, but she is off to greener pastures. Sinjin, good to see you again. Peter Campbell, this is Guy McKendrick. I know everything about you. You're a very impressive fellow. I wish I could return the compliment. <laughs> well, perhaps one day you shall. <laughs> Miss Olson, one of our copywriters. I know everything about you. You are a very impressive young woman. Why, thank you. Is that what you're telling everybody that you know everything about them? As you are. I hope we chat later. That is a very handsome man. Is he the one that started the company? Which one is he? I am. I can't tell you how exciting it is to finally meet you. That's very flattering. Guy here has done a, a study of your work, which is quite a compliment. Well, we're going to debrief Mr. Price, and the plan is for you to join us for luncheon. In the conference room at one o'clock. <laughs> Sounds like Agatha Christie. Well, that was strange. Everything seems very strange. I don't know what what's going on right now. Look at that. The suspense is killing him. <laughs> It's killing me, too. I don't know what they're... We're very impressed, Lane. Very, very impressed indeed. Okay. In nine months, you've trimmed every bit of excess, increased billings, and we haven't heard a word of complaint. We've decided to offer you something that we hope you'll view as a reward and a challenge. Is it in the box? In a manner of speaking. Ooh, what is that? Looks like a snake. <laughs> It is. That. Is that a cane? <laughs> it's for our snake charmer. We're sending you to Bombay. Bombay? What would I do there? Well, hopefully the same thing you accomplished here. They don't even discuss it with him. He just tell him, hey, I'm sending you to Bombay. If I didn't I'm... find a spot for it, if I'm simply moving again. Don't pout. One of your greatest qualities is you always do as you're told. Nonsense. You're moving up. How am I moving up? That's the spirit. Bro. Oh, my kid. Let me begin by offering my warmest He's wishes. He's not even and one of the partners. Price in his exemplary work. It will be hard to lose him, but there's no doubt that our loss is India's gain. Are they sending this nigga here? See, there'll be no further reductions in the ranks. <laughs> yes, that's good news. If I might, I'd like to walk you through this slight reorganization. Business maturity with your creative edge. A triumvirate of Don and myself and Mr. Cooper, our chairman emeritus, will oversee three streamlined departments, creative art and copy, 
As you can see, nothing much has really changed. Frankly, my presence here is just to ensure thorough communication, that we help each other on both sides of the pond. I'm sure you all have a thousand questions. But for the time being, I say we inform the troops so that the transition can begin immediately after the holiday. They bring in their own man. Gosh, we're really going to miss you. What the hell just happened? They reorganized us, and you're the only one in this room who got a promotion. Really? Yes, really. I apologize for my wild imagination. That sucks, man. See? It's clean. I gotta talk about this because this is one of the thing about mergers and deals in companies that that you know it's one of the reasons why I seeked out to you know start stuff on my own because the 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 um the bureaucracy when it comes on to that stuff man it's just is it's just so finicky and 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 a lot of times it's is is stupid you get what i'm saying because you have somebody here that you know what i'm saying bringing in big accounts doing a thing here already why the hell would you bring somebody from a foreign country unless they just don't like really like americans and i think i think this is this could all be blamed on on um whatever what's his name again what what's his name again the dude I, I can't even remember his name duck that's his name right this can all be blamed on him because he's the one that br brought them to to and think he was gonna get the job too and now everybody's kind of getting screwed over because and, and this could all be also when it comes on to sir and, and the thing about it is that cooper didn't even really want to sell right he did not he cooper didn't even really want to sell but is i believe his wife kind of convinced him to do it he didn't even really want to do it um Don gets passed over again. And it's just like <laughs> That's crazy, man. But let's see what, where where that part of the show goes. But that's tough. That's it's a tough pill to, to swallow. To sometimes mergers can be for the better, but a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? It it can be for the worse. For my new big sister, the best in the world. And my goodness, it's from Baby Jean. Babies get fairies to do things, you know that. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's really from here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think you should open it. Bobby really and truly never gets any shine or attention other than when he's being disciplined in this show. And you are very important to me too. I'm sure you all have a thousand questions. But before I raise a glass. To Sterling Cooper's future, I should like to recognize its past. Hear, hear. Hear, hear my ass. I'm hey, also aware of a rather significant India. milestone. Mrs. Harris, <laughs> it's I wish not you a great caviar place to live and on Earth, children cool. and all that is good in your new life. Well, there, there. That, that wasn't my intention. You're we'll have the... our presentations tomorrow. Let this afternoon be a fete worthy of Joan. Enjoy the liquor and delicatessen. Delicatessen. Donald Draper. Mr. Draper, this is Miss Wakeman. Mr. Hilton has expressed a desire to meet with you. May I ask what this is regarding? I just set his schedule. When are you available? How far are you from the Waldorf Astoria? Fifteen minutes. It's the presidential suite. I'm on my way. I just, I wanted to get you a card of a present. I don't want you to think I never listened to you. It's just we can't all be you. Be that as it may, I do take some credit for your success here. Hey, put that back. 
I'm going home. <laughs> I'm really happy that you got what you wanted. I remember on my first day, you said that could happen to me if I played my cards right. Are you getting sentimental? Don't worry, Something really bad is about to happen. If we don't, I just have to say... Oh, oh for the love of Christ! Oh, oh my God! My foot! Call an ambulance! Oh. Holy crap! What did I say? Something bad is about to happen. Goodbye. This is not good. Donald Draper. We've met before. We have, haven't we? Yellow Rock Country Club. We had a drink, of course. Oh yeah, I you remember this guy. Me. Let me return the favor. This man owns the Hilton. After this He's... comes out, that's crazy. Next week. Well, I don't do that for everyone. How did you find me? Well, I called around, told people I had a long chat with a handsome fellow from Sterling Cooper, and your name never came up. This Apparently yo, this is have... this is the guy that Don made the drink for, bro, in the bar. You guys remember that shit? I at first when I saw him, cause he was at the party. I think it was Sterling's. Something was happening. It was like an event of sorts, and he was like trying to get away from his wife or some shit. I don't remember exactly, but this dude is fucking Conrad Hilton, dude. Like you can't. And, and the thing about it is that. On happenstance, I've actually met people. I've actually met people who are like famous and didn't know who the who the hell they are. Like you have like <laughs> like trying to explain this and can't explain it. This is this exact kind of thing has happened to me before. Where I've met somebody was really nice to them. Didn't know who the hell they are <laughs> and then end up getting a call from them later to get invited to, to not necessarily to do business with them, um, but discuss business and to when I think find out where they who they are and then I get to pick their brains about certain things like they inv invite us out to dinner or some shit like that. Like. That's crazy. Imagine that. Imagine if you were like, you met somebody like this and you were an asshole to them. And people like this could could just, at the snap of a finger, they could change your life, bro. Like, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Long chats with people. I think you wouldn't be in the presidential suite right now if you worked for free. Don, this is friendly. Connie, this is my profession. What do you want me to do? I want you to give me one for free. I don't think anybody wants to think about a mouse in a hotel. <laughs> exactly. I was like, what the hell is that about? You got something better? I might. <laughs> Need to get hired. So, what do you want? I'd love a chance of your business. Okay. But the next time somebody like me asks you a question like that, you need to think bigger. Good analogy. One opportunity <laughs> at a time. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Draper, you have an emergency call. She's an idiot. I didn't know she couldn't drive. But you took the machine out. You have to have respect for that equipment. It's very safe when operated correctly. We had the world handed to us on a plate. And then you swing in on a chandelier, drop your pants, and crap on it. Any news? <laughs> He might lose his foot. Right when he got it in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, somewhere in this business, this has happened before. <laughs> Sterling don't give a damn. I'm heartbroken. It's a terrible tragedy. One that surely could have been avoided, although, Mrs. Harris, thank you for your quick thinking. The man is missing a foot. How is he going to work? He can't walk. Doctor said he'll never golf again. I'm afraid we have to reevaluate our entire strategy. Lane will remain here indefinitely. We'll close the office tomorrow, obviously. Miss We're all gonna miss you, John. <laughs> I 
feel like I just went to my own funeral. I didn't like the eulogy. Uh, she threw it out the window. <laughs> Yo, Sally ain't playing. Just breathe. <laughs> that was creepy out too. <laughs> that is creepy. I don't even know what to say. Imagine oh, your no. child being traumatized by their own sibling. <laughs> Grandpa G. He's not supposed to be here anymore. He's not. He's called Jean. He sleeps in his room. He looks just like him. And I bet when he starts talking, he's going to sound just like him, too. Go to sleep. There's no such thing as ghosts. Older than that, That's actually. Stuff. There's nothing I can do. She's jealous of her little brother. No, she's not jealous. She's scared. And it's all because he has that name. That name. You've never liked it, and you haven't hidden it well, and now you're bringing her into this. That's ridiculous. Let's talk about Sally. He hated me, and I hated him. That's the memory. That's his name. I didn't mean to wake him. That's okay, honey. Everything's fine. Come over here. She was so close with her grandfather. I don't, you know what I'm saying? If anything, she would be. I mean, I don't understand why she's scared, but I guess children are children. On top of the fact that the thing about it is this, right? I would not. If, if it's somebody that I do not like, because I don't, I don't hate people. I just don't like how they treat me or their actions. Um, so in terms of if if Don is saying to you, hey, and he was fine with it. He, he wasn't even giving no pushback. It's just that you're saying that I'm not okay with it. If if I was not okay with it, right, and I'm not giving you, you no know, pushback about it, because I get it. It's your dad's name, whatever the situation is. I ain't going to put that in, push that on me now. Now I have to say to you, <laughs> you know say now I'm put in a place now where I have to say to you, hey, um, you know, he didn't like, I didn't like him. He didn't like me. So at, at, at the end of the day, you chose this to, to make yourself feel better about him passing or whatever the situation is. And I wasn't even giving you no pushback. I was just like, okay, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Cool. You want to name him Eugene? Go ahead. Cool. Because, you know, I don't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't put big stock in names. In some ways, my family, my family does. They put a lot of stock into names, especially my um, one of my older sisters. They She puts a lot of stock in it. Like, all of her kids have biblical names. Like, they, they all have biblical names. Like, she put a lot of stock into that. Like, I don't put stock in names because it's just like, all right, I'm just not going to name you something stupid. Like, I'm not going to name my child Bob. <laughs> so, or something like that right but at the end of the day i don't put a lot of stock in it so if you know what i'm saying if um my significant other if she wants to name the child whatever as long as it's not anything that you know what i'm saying that's like out of this world you know what i'm saying i like simplicity I don't really have a simple name, but it is it is what it is. Um, I have a very unique name. Not a lot of people have my name. Um, so it's like, it, I don't even think anybody else on earth <laughs> has my name and the way how it's spelt. So it's like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's, I don't really put a lot of stock in names. So it's like, Okay, it, it would be fine by me, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't want my name to be I don't I don't I wouldn't want my kid's name to be Eugene. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is. In their case, Don is fine with it because I don't think he cares that much about 
what these kids name is you know what i mean um so in terms of what betty is saying and all this other stuff i get where she's coming from which is like so i'll get over it and it's true she will get over it you know what i'm saying um so you you i mean i don't think um i mean if she is like fearful of your brother and he's a baby because he has the same name as your grandfather it's like oh he won't go away he, it's like he's still here but that's i'm saying kind of like with the narrative it doesn't really make sense because if anything sally should be more closer to the baby because she was so close with her grandfather why would she think that her grandfather is coming back to haunt her doesn't really make sense but we'll just go along yes, with yeah. it you know what i mean it's a wonderful thing All right, so that was Mad Men season three, episode six, man. And um, with the situation that's going on at the office, that's just, you know, kind of everything working out for them. They still didn't say if they were going to promote Don to that um, position because something happened to Guy, <laughs> right? Um, because of what happened to guys. So he lost the foot is like, he can't even walk. So I don't know what they're planning to do with him. Um, yeah, I'm saying like, well, you can't, it's the kind of job where you, you need both feet. <laughs> so you need both feet. You gotta be able to entertain clients and you can't do that in a wheelchair, sir. You know what I'm saying? Or on crutches. It doesn't look good, <laughs> right? Image is everything when it comes on to advertising, regardless of, you get what I'm trying to say? images everything and unfortunately it's just what job requires in my opinion um they, they might be some exceptions to the rule if you will that is out there doing advertising in a wheelchair and that's cool you, you know what i'm saying that's cool but the majority of it i believe that when you're talking about entertaining clients and doing stuff like that images everything you get what i'm saying what you are putting out there is everything like you can't show up boogers in your nose and yeah you know i'm saying ashy skin and all this other stuff. image is everything when it comes on to advertising and entertaining clients and i know that from experience so the thing about it is um a lot of times when you are watching this show and you're trying to understand what's really going on a lot of it is not very clear cut so you got to dig a little bit deeper to find out um, some true, some, some deeper meanings to what they're trying to portray and showing us these people's lives. Right. Um, I hope that something happens between Don and, you know, I'm saying, and, and Mr. Hilton, because that is just those kind of happenstances don't happen to everybody, to, to everybody. And those kind of opportunities don't come around every time. I think what Mr. Hilton wanted to do with that, because it's like one door closed and another and another opens when it comes on to Don. He's very lucky in that way where I was thinking that he was going to go there, meet with this guy. And then, you know, this opportunity is going to help him to make a decision to leave. Because at this point, I'm kind of cheering for Don to leave this situation that he's in because apparently you know what i'm saying at, at first he was a silent partner with the company they never put his name on the door right he was he was a silent partner then he got essentially because they got bought out you know what i'm saying he was the the creative director but it was kind of like weird in between kind of thing with him it was like there was never any clear indication that he was ever going to get promoted and now you know what i'm saying cooper kind of built up his confidence a little bit he thought he was going to get promoted to look over the office or at least transfer him to london no but this dude guy shows up and just creates this weird awkwardness and then he announced oh he's coming to new york to take over this office and run it, everything everything's going to be ran through him because ooh, he got Mercedes Benz. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so cool. Um, no problem there. But then, you know, incident happened. Um, yeah, put put a drunk person 
you know what I'm saying? That's been drinking on a lawnmower in an office setting. What do you think is going to happen? Take a wild guess. Because I was like, all these people are here. Somebody's going to get run over. I was like, something bad is about to happen. And I was hoping that I, I thought somebody was going to get ran over and like split in two because, be, be, you know what I'm saying? But to be fair, it's a lot more. So, you know what I'm saying? Got his foot ran over because, hey, you're not paying attention. Do not think, you know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not coherent. Alcohol is involved. Shit is about to go down. Dude get his foot ran over. Now he can't do the job. So now they got to reevaluate. They got to keep Lane in New York and not send him to India. But they still, there was no clear indication of what they planning to do with Don. Right? Um, so I think Don is going to create a bomb campaign for Hilton. I, I, or at the very least, he'll bring in that account to Sterling Cooper. And, you know, he'll get big props for it. But that's not what I wanted to do. And I think when Hilton, when Mr. Hilton was trying to tell him to think bigger, when somebody like me comes to you, I think he was trying to say, yo, you want to start your own agency and get us as your first client? Like, I think that's weird. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I would be thinking to do. If you would blend a big account like that, remember Don is not on a contract. He's not on the contract with them. He can leave at any time because he's not on the contract with them. So he can leave at any time and go start his own agency and become a competitor to them. And that would be huge because he already has great rapport with this dude that has huge. That's a big start. You get what I'm saying? And he already has a reputation around New York where he can probably even poach clients or even even bring some clients with him from Sterling Cooper because the people like him and they like what he does. They like his ideas. They like how he works. They like everything pretty much about him when it comes on to advertising. So it will work out greatly for him. So yeah, man, this was a good episode. The whole situation that happened with, with Sally and, and Betty, I'm kind of like, you know, about 80% on Betty's side about the whole thing with Sally. Um, event, let me tell y'all something when kids are scared of stuff and you explain it to them one or two times that, Hey, ghosts don't exist in it. They ain't nothing in your closet and stuff like, especially a child that is as old as Sally. Okay. You just got to leave them be. Cause at the end of the day, if you, if you are not listening to what your parents are telling you, you're going to let them, I'm telling you that I'm here. Okay. Ain't no ghost going to bother you. Right. Even if, you, if, if they want to come, cause usually what happens is that the kids would want to come sleep with the parents and stuff like that. Sleep with the parents, sleep in their bed, whatever. Right. In situations, in situations like those, eventually you're going to have to learn to sleep with the lights off and sleep, you know, with a nightlight on or whatever the situation is. Eventually you're going to get over it. Right. And on that, on those points, I do agree with Betty. Um, the whole thing where she was like, kind of, kind of trying to throw it into Don's face. And it's like, um, woman, I never gave you any pushback about this name. All of a sudden now you want to throw that at me. Oh, you're never good. Cool with, with the name. Yes. I, even if I wasn't cool with it, I didn't say nothing though. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't say anything. So why is this? Why are you bringing that up? Why are you trying to throw it? Oh, I intuitively knew. So now. Because of the Sally situation, you're trying to throw that on me now because I'm trying to tell you that she's scared. Um, and we gotta be understanding of that. Like that's crazy. That's that's crazy. But as I said, 80% agree with her, the other 20% go into to that disagreement, um, the disagreement and stuff that she's trying to make it seem like it's Don's fault why her dad is dead. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. But in any case, great episode. Love it. Leave a like, leave a comment. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. And I'm out. Peace.